Hello folks, we're on a Two Wheels Better Works outing. We've come here to Nivelles in Belgium. Hey up. And you know, hey up, Paul, how are you doing, mate? I've got my helmet on that we're gonna we're gonna make these things. What one of them? Well, we're gonna make some helmets. I've got a helmet nice, factory. Uh, I've got a fancy one. Uh, how, how is it? Well, how come you've got a proper helmet and I look like this? Well, I, got, I was here first. I've got a much faster taxi than you, so I mean... Uh, you get on me nerves, you. You get the best so of everything. Get I'm lost. Go out my way. In fact, I've got the job sorted anyway. I know somebody. Just, just right. give us a bit of room. I've got my friend over here, you see. When? Bienvenue à l'Azer. I'm going to impress you now, <laughs> because I've been practising French now for the last four weeks. <clears throat> Hello, Andy, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. Would you please take me around the factory? Sure, Wayne, I'd be delighted. Follow me. Thank you. Well, basically, this factory is situated uh, approximately 20 miles south of Brussels in a village in a city called Nivelles, and uh, its labour force is 110 persons. We actually manufacture the shells, which you are, I know you're keen to see, uh, in a separate site, and uh, they are duly delivered here, and uh, we end up with this. Aha, uh -huh. well I've seen these around as I've been walking around and I thought to myself, did they grow on trees or something? Because I haven't noticed them being made. So you tell me these are made elsewhere then? Yes, these are made in our separate site and manufactured from an injection moulding material which we call iMac. iMac? As in the stuff you stick on your legs to get rid of the hair? Uh, not quite well, no. iMac uh, we utilise is uh, impact modified alloy composite, a high tech material uh, from the space age world of Dutch chemical giant DSM. All right, now then, clear a myth, Andy. Mm -hmm. Tell the world about this split helmet lark. They don't split, they're not made in two halves, are they? No. Uh, the injection moulding machine, when it separates to remove the shell, actually sometimes leaves a, a slight trace of a visible line. On some of the higher, higher end, high line models, we will actually buff this and remove it from sight, but it does unfortunately lead to the impression from some people that they are manufactured in two halves and glued together, which obviously they're not. And this is the case with every other manufacturer as every well, Every other manufacturer, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's clearly a little myth. Um, what now? I mean, this is ugly. It's horrible. Opaque coloured. Uh, how do we get something pretty out of that? Right, well, what we've got to do now is we've got to take this and turn it into, for the first stage, this. And Here's we'll do... we made earlier, is this set? Exactly, yes. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to take it along to our painting machine. And as you can see, this area of the factory is quite a busy area, and the painting process, from start to finish, will actually take around 40 minutes. Approximately 1,500 helmets a day are passing through this area, and the helmets are actually passing, passing through a, with an electric force field around them of 66,000 volts to give that extra nice shine. And once this process is completed, we can go through to the decaling department. This is a real hive of activity. As you can see, the helmets come through from the painting department, and it's now got to go into the in-depth ink transfer system. That's quite a, quite a lengthy process, and individual helmets can take anything from between 7 and 15 or 20 minutes even on a new brand of, uh, or new style of decal. And the process is very much similar to the old Airfix type kit where you actually water decal, slide it onto the helmet, but the oh, big yeah. difference here is that after 24 hours, the outer lining or the outer layer of the decal is actually removed, so all you actually get left on the helmet is the ink, hence ink transfer system. I've got it, I understand that bit. Everybody sort of as a preconceived idea that helmets are, are spray painted like airbrushed or whatever right. is this a relatively new concept then this uh, it's been around about, about two years now but uh, you'd find that uh, the uh, the consistency and the uh, the lack of consistency re relating to airbrushing would just give you an absolute nightmare when it comes to painting yeah. and of course the delay in which it would incur would be unprofitable and yeah. the helmet cost would be just far too high. Because I noticed that a lot of the helmets really are not a lot more money for a, a deco version than a, a plain version. No. What happens to them once the, the, the transfer's dried and they've taken that, sec that top layer off? What happens then? It's not shiny, is it, then? No, it's not. So, that, of course, it then has to go back into the paint line, 66,000 volts, another 45 minutes, and it gets lacquered. And it's nice and shiny. Yeah. These girls are, look sort of very proficient at it. They just sit there, slap it on, light it in, cut it, and jobs are good. Un. Is it easy-peasy, this? Uh, I don't think so. You know what I mean? I'm aiming at You know what I'm aiming at? I want to go. You want to go? Can I have a go? Wayne, off you go. Leave it to me.
You, know, you wouldn't believe how many bits and pieces there are in a helmet. There are boxes of straps, buckles, fasteners, bits of this, bits of that. Uh, Andy, um, has he made a complete mess of that helmet, Wayne? Oh. Oh, words fail me. <laughs> fail me all the time as well with him. Uh, I've got some buckles, well, fasteners, right. strap fasteners here. We've got lots of different types. I mean, why do we have loads of different types? Well, different countries have different requirements. This, for example, is for some of the European countries. This one in your hand here is totally plastic and is used on our watercraft helmets, jet ski, for example. Right. And this model here is the one that's more commonly used in the UK. And as you can see, it's uh, oh, right. it's, uh, it's quick eject. Uh, quick quick ejection system. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be careful there. Eh? I'm glad you said that. I'm not moving. <laughs> right. So I mean, we've got um, bins of all sorts of stuff here. There are bits of polystyrene. There are girls with glue guns and bits of tape and God knows what. But it's all very carefully controlled. This, isn't it? It looks well. I mean, to me, it looks disorganised. How do they know what's going on? But these. You can know where every part is, do you, all well, the time? All the time, as you've seen. And each each station, there is a monitoring terminal, which yeah. is connected to the mainframe computer. And that after every stage of process, walking through the factory, you'll notice that the ladies are punching in a sequence of numbers. Mm. That tells the computer at which stage that particular helmet is. And prior to going to the next stage, it then allocates the barcode, which eventually you will see on the external box in the oh, shop. Right. So, I mean, right, so as soon as it arrives in here, it's... Y you could keep track of any one helmet, couldn't you? Absolutely, and of course this is a, a prerequisite for batch testing and for BSI, so that if ever there is a problem down the line, maybe one, two, three years with a helmet, God forbid, we can then track back exactly the day it was produced and even the person who produced it. So Andy, what's this, uh, this lady? She's obviously very, very busy here, but you know, I'm sorry, but I mean... This, we're in the 1990s, this is flipping sellotape, what's going on here? Well, yes, I must admit it does look like sellotape, but this ain't no ordinary sellotape, Paul. Just trying to get a hold of that now, if you just put it between your finger and thumb, and if I just squeeze gently there, in around about 14 <laughs> hours, that is permanent. Oh, is it? Albeit, the only purpose for the sellotape at this point is to hold the actual cloth components onto the actual lining, the polished iron lining, prior to it being inserted into the shell. Right. So it's merely a transient manoeuvre whilst it's awaiting the so insertion. So it, it's not sellotape? It's not sellotape. It's flipping, isn't it? I can't get it off now. <laughs> right, so Andy, um, these are the, the bins that I, I mentioned with bits of helmets going around in them. What's, what's this? OK, this is where all the final components of the helmet... Hey, oh, flipping it now is trouble. Trouble. You've ruined that flipping helmet, it's all my... Hey, masterful. I'm an artist. <laughs> right, well, some nature. Well, you've been uh, poncing around in there. I've been busy in here. Look, assembling all my bits. So, right, sorry, Andy, before he interrupted there. OK, this is where all the final components of all the helmets will all, all come together. Right. That's where the, uh, the barcode uh, and the label, which we uh, mentioned earlier on, is allocated and fixed onto the side of the helmet, which eventually, as you know, will pass onto the box, which you see in your shop. OK. The shells are placed in with all the components, all the individual components that will eventually make up the helmet. Yeah, they've got the little bit, all the little plastic all the little, bits all, the, all the little clips, the moulds, yeah. the chin guard, everything. And if I find the lady will pass down here and she'll put the liners in. So we've seen the helmets being produced from stage, from stage one right the way through to the final stage, stuck in a box. Then they come here, a distribution warehouse, which isn't exactly on the same area, is it? We're up the road. Yeah, we're about two kilometres up the road from the main factory unit, and this is our purpose-built 20,000 square foot warehouse, purposely built for the direct distribution of helmets, i.e. the French market, of course the Belgian market, and the UK. There's thousands. I mean, we've been walking up and down the aisles and getting lost. It's like a maze. How many do you keep in here? Well, the current count is 34,000, uh, with approximately 7,000 for the UK market alone. And that'll be obviously why if I order a black in a certain size or a, a, the wolf style in a certain size, I always get it. There's no problem. Are there occasions where there are hiccups? 
Well, of course, it's down to us with the crystal ball. We, we have it pretty tight. It's six weeks lead time from you saying today, OK, how many helmets do you need, Andy? And I say, right, we need another 400 of that particular model. It's six weeks until the factory produces, which means I've got to have enough stock to, to, to supply that six weeks demand. Hopefully we get it right. Sometimes we might get it wrong, but we've been pretty good so far. As I've been looking around and going up and down the aisles and getting lost, I also noticed the cage over here. What on earth is that cage for? Have you got a Rottweiler or something? No, 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 not quite. I mean, the cage, as you are quite aware, when we send helmets to your shop, um, within 48 hours the helmets are arriving in the shop. Within the Greater London area, they're arriving within 24 hours. That's facilitated by the cage, which we allow allows us basically to place helmets into this system. And at any time during the evening, maybe seven, eight o'clock, the courier can come along with this truck, access the cage only, and leaves this all this area totally safe. Got you. Well, can we go oh. and have a look at it? Yeah, please. Have a look. Bloody journalists. Hey, hang on, Andy! Oh, Andy. please let me out. Hmm? I can't get out. I'm in Belgium. I've nowhere to go. As we've seen, helmet manufacture requires the use of many different skills and components. Indeed, it's a high-tech, serious business.